What's up everyone? We have audio, we have video, we have game capture, we have OBS cooperating, we have the computer cooperating. So while this is all working, let's play some games and keep this thing going because I am late and I'm sorry. Hopefully you guys weren't like twiddling your thumbs at 8.30. Doubtful, but if you were, much appreciated. So without further ado, we're here obviously for the game that is right there. Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo, which is actually Super Mario World 2. But in the West, it was just referred to as Yoshi's Island. The West being us, United States, Americas. Anyway, awesome, we hear you. Uh, Kate says Yoshi's Island is the cutest. Uh, Alex says, Yoshi, uh, says Yoshi's cute. So awesome, I agree. Yoshi's one of the best. So thank you all for joining yet another Classics Lounge. Grab some liquid refreshments, kick back, and let's enjoy the game this week. So, let me just put this over there. There we go. Can you guys see me? Oh. Yay, let's play. Who here has never played, well, I played, but who here has never played Yoshi's Island? We're going back 23 years. Yeah, 23 years. Yoshi's Island is where all the Yoshis live. They are all in an uproar over the baby that fell from the sky. Wait, the baby seems to know where he wants to go. The bond between the twins informs each of them where the other one is. The Yoshis decide to carry the baby to his destination via a relay system. Now begins a new adventure for the Yoshis and Baby Mario. Let's go. So again, thank you all for joining here. Thanks for being patient. And again, sorry for the delay. If you're watching this on demand, it doesn't really matter, I guess, now does it? But we had some technical issues. You know, what's new, right? Technology. So the first thing you'll notice if you're more familiar with it, okay, let's read. If Baby Mario falls off Yoshi's back, the countdown timer will begin. When he reaches zero, the max toadies will kidnap Baby Mario. The more stars, star symbol, you collect, the safer you are. <laughs> the countdown timer will slowly count back up to 10. Complete the stage by passing Baby Mario to the next Yoshi. Why are you going so fast? Then you read oh, the look next at one. That. Normal controls. It's not normal controls. No, you're wrong. They don't know, they can't see you. So you notice the art style is very different. Um, Rob says, I know you're gonna be shocked, but I've never played this. You know, Rob, we're gonna have a talk, because like every time I play something or bring something up, you've never played it. Right, but he yells at us for not playing or watching stuff all the time. Right. I'm looking at you in very different ways than I did when I first met you. I was somewhat, not intimidated, but I guess, uh, how do I put it? Admiring that another person appreciated and looked at gaming the way I did. It wasn't just a Call of Duty gamer. Sorry for those that play that out there. I just judged a lot of you, but for real. I buy the game too, so it's okay. But for real though, I looked at you as playing pretty much anything you could get your hands on. In fact, I almost thought you played more games than me. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe you're a PC guy, which is an area that I'm not pro in. But it's just interesting. Each each week that goes on, I'm learning a lot more about what you have and have not played. <laughs> the case says Baby Mario, and Rob says, I was too busy playing Sonic Spinball. Special flower. You get a five for one up, and they add to your point total. They also add flowers to the gold ring the left. Yeah. Yeah, if you joined us last night, it was Yoshi's Woolly World. Obviously, the gameplay mechanics are very similar uh, as it came from this game series. Kate says Mario is greater than Sonic. You know, me as a young lad would disagree, kind of. I was really obsessed with Sonic when Sonic first came out. 
the visuals and the speed of the game was just amazing. Overall, though, in the long scheme of things, Mario has had more hits than Sonic. So, yes, I agree Mario is greater than Sonic, but when we were comparing Super Mario World and Sonic the Hedgehog, it was a close race, to be honest. I was probably playing a lot more Sonic when it first came out than I was Super Mario World. I came back home, though. Nintendo will be always my first home. And we all know where Sega ended up. Womp womp. So as you notice though, as I was mentioning, the graphic styling is, is very different. Um, very pastel and uh, childish. Hence Baby Mario here. Um, if he gets knocked off Yoshi, you'll notice one of the most annoying aspects of the game. So I feel like we need to make a list and just kind of go through, starting back with like the Atari or NES Rob, and check off what you have played and what you haven't played. And I think ultimately, I need a recommendations list that I have to give you. And, and vice versa, I'd like one as well from you to me. But I feel like the value here is, is definitely going to be me recommending a bunch of games to you. I believe one of the conversations we had too is uh, that you hadn't played Bioshock Infinite. What? <laughs> yeah, what? Um... Mario is better than Sonic, no question. Definitely. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Was it Bioshock Infinite you had not played? So you notice a lot of the secrets and balloons, a lot of the, the hidden things here. Woolly World obviously still continued the tradition that was set and established here with this game. So yesterday we played something, well heck, that was 20 years after this game. So we traveled back in time from yesterday, 20 years, but overall we're traveling back 23 years. So here's a fun question if you're all willing to answer. In 1995, how old were you all? And how old were you all when you actually played this game, if you played it? For the first time. I have absolutely no idea how old I was, but I was 10 and 85. Same here. Um, I probably didn't play this until the late 90s, to be honest with you. This was not heavy on my radar of games that I needed to play, and I didn't ever own this game either. I had borrowed it, I think, from friends or put it at friends' houses. This was right before the N64 and PS1 came into my household. And I think at the time I was playing the Sega Saturn. I had the 32X add-on for the Genesis. I was playing a lot of Genesis still. Um, but I think I had picked up the Sega Saturn at that time. I was playing a lot of that system. Um, the little white gun, playing some Virtua Cop, Area 51. Those are fun games. Unfortunately, they don't work with the new TVs. Uh, Rob says I didn't play Infinite yet. Sarah says I was 10. I refuse to answer that one on the grounds that I'm already too old to be compared to all of you. Yeah, when this came out, you were, I think, 26 or 27, Rob, when this came out. Kate says I was 11. Um, Sarah says, are you sure, Kate? Y'all are mean to each other. <laughs> So I probably was 13 or 14 to be honest when I first played this game. I didn't play it at launch. Again, this game wasn't on my like, oh my gosh, I need to play. Um, I was really into the action games at that time. Oh. Whoa. I was, obviously Mortal Kombat was pretty popular. Um, PS1 was starting to come out. Um, Saturn I was playing a lot of. So I was playing the Virtua Fighter games. I was playing um, stuff like that. Daytona. Um, that game is amazing. One of the best cheesy soundtracks in gaming. Uh, Rob's swearing. He says you guys are a-holes. Uh, I'm really not. 
prop. Isn't there a kid watching? Watch your mouth. Okay, so it's played as a kid and again in my 20s. This this is a game too, like with the art style. I think it's aged well. Uh, having this on the SNES Classic uh, is, a, is a great ad and it's definitely deserving to be on the SNES Classic. With only 21 games on there, uh, it's, it's slim pickings. Um, but I would have loved at least 30 games just like the NES Classic. But this is definitely worthy of the 21 games on there. I would have liked to have seen Pilot Wings on there. Remember that game? You didn't like Pilot Wings? Yeah, it's probably what made you uh, play stupidly. Stupidly? You mean flight controls? That pilots use? Yeah, I mean stupidly. It's not stupidly. Up is down and down is up backwards. Uh, Rob says you're not the boss of me, Andrea. <laughs> Alex knows what he's allowed to say. Seriously. I was teasing. I'm not trying to make a comment on the parenting skills. Just FYI. I think that I was the one saying this one. It is stupidly, Andrea, I'm with you there. <laughs> You're talking about the controls? No, 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 no. Inverted makes sense. You lean back to look up, so you push down. Nope. You want to go down, so you push down. You want to go up, so you push up. That's what you say. <laughs> sounds like you were. Sounds like it's about to be fight a clock, Missy. Fight a clock. <laughs> you gonna fight her? That's not very nice. I will lose because I'm a weakling. Weakling. So I spent some time today kind of plotting out some ideas for future episodes. Um, how are you guys liking the voting? Is that going well? Have you checked out the, the poll? Uh, every Wednesday, the poll ends and a new one is posted for the following week. Obviously this one destroyed Grand Theft Auto 3 on the PS2. Um, that would have been a fun one to play, but apparently you guys were pretty much 100% opposed to it. I think myself and uh, Rob Reynolds were the only two that voted for GTA 3. Everyone else voted for this. I can vote for my own game. I'm the one who has to play it. <laughs> so, uh, so all of all the Mario games, this might be the only one that I never played. Uh, I like the voting, adds an extra layer of fun. So, Rob already knows, we have many, many spreadsheets and things we organize behind the scenes here to run this, you know, as the business we're attempting to. Um, organization is definitely a thing that I try to pride myself in and try to keep this thing, you know, scheduled. <laughs> I, I've always been one. Better than just replay the day, but... Right, yeah. Hey, that's not my fault. Um, Andrea, I think, has molded me into this, like... Crazy scheduled beast. No, you're just organized. It's the thing I value now. Uh, but I spent some time plotting out what I want to play from right now this week until the beginning of December of this year. They're just ideas. Um, I've already like had some ideas on there that I've shifted around some things to fit with other releases coming out um, to kind of like like I did with Kirby, right? Market Kirby and get everyone amped for the new one before it came out. Um, obviously, there's a Yoshi game coming out possibly this year. It'll probably be fourth quarter, to be honest with you. I haven't heard any rumblings. And they want to spread out their Switch games anyways. We're getting a lot of stuff already heading into summer with game releases. I'm assuming Yoshi and or Smash Brothers would be a holiday thing this year. Um, Bonus stage. But I have other ideas. A lot of it is this 8 and 16 bit era stuff, but I also kind of want to touch on the PS1, PS2 era. I just got to figure out the logistics of the game capture stuff with that, which hopefully by then I'll figure it out. 
Uh, returning your earlier question about me being a play anything, I can get my hands on Teddy Gamer. Uh, Alex would like to know that Yoshi's story on the N64 is oh. originally going to be called Yoshi's Island 64. I didn't know that. That's a fun fact. So Yoshi's Island 64 one. And I think I've only played that one once or twice, to be honest. Which one? The Yoshi story on the N64. I've never played that game on that thing. I think it's on the virtual console. Is it? It might be. So that could be a fun one that we may you know, play down the road. You've also never played Donkey Kong 64. Mm. For being such a Donkey Kong Country fan. Mm. Well, I mean, really? That's an episode that is coming in end of April or May on the Classics Lounge. That would be a week that you unfortunately won't have a vote because I want to get hyped for the Tropical Breeze re-release on the Switch. We had purchased that at one time and rented it one time on the Wii U. Both times we couldn't get it to run on a Wii U for some reason. It didn't like the disc. So we never got to play that Donkey Kong Country game. So hopefully we don't have bad luck with it on the um, Switch. I've only come across it a couple times with things that didn't work multiple ways. Tropic Thunder the movie, we rented that like three different times and I think even picked it up used and it wouldn't play in any of our devices. Eventually, it, yeah, eventually we ended up watching it digitally somewhere or somehow, I don't remember how. And like we wanted to watch it so bad because the hype train was so high for that movie at that time, we, like, we need to see this. I don't even think we loved it. I think it was okay, right? I mean, it was okay, but I think the problem is just that they the movie gets hyped so badly. You know, like, oh, this is so good. It was like uh, The Bachelor or whatever the whatever that movie was. No, what's that movie where they lose the guy? He's on the the whole time. Oh, The Hangover? Thank you. Yeah. Like, that was not that funny. I mean, I enjoyed it. I think Bryson was just funnier than that movie. Bryson right? was funny. Um... You missed the upper half of that statement. Yeah, can you repeat that? Sorry. I, your your book of text cut off. <laughs> Is that Rob? Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention a second here. I'm going to reset. Okay. Alex says that the boulder has a chain chomp face. It does. It does. I like chain chomp. It barks like a dog. If I played Mario's Missing, ah, Mario's Missing, that's a good one. I think I, I have that one. But a lot of the games I had picked out were more so not just popular games that I want to do for the polls in the coming months. Um, they're more so games that kind of molded me and influenced my gaming habits that I still have today as far as the type of games that I prefer or genres, if you will. So you're going to see a lot of you know, RPGs and simulation games. A game that I pumped a lot of hours into that I don't know how well it'll go over on stream is uh, SimCity on the Super Nintendo. It'll probably be incredibly boring to watch. But I'm going to try. Well, I mean, it's a simulation game. It's a city builder. I mean, do you awesome. enjoy watching me play it? I do. But I think that's because I'm terrible at those games, so I think I like watching other people do it. Or maybe it's because I just like criticizing them a lot, which I'm really good at when you play. Well, that's been our stream. I'm no, just kidding. Let's see how good you are. I played the ever living crap out of SimCity and yes. Really? You did? Okay. We're gonna have a city builder competition. Who can get to Metropolis the fastest? With the least amount of crime and fire and disaster. SimCity, that was a train wreck. I feel like there's a ton there. Oh. 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 You lose. 
so there's a game that I actually play a lot of. I know it's on PC, and I heard it's much better on PC, but I picked it up on console because, again, not a big PC gamer. I'll, I'll receive a lot of hate mail and probably a comment or a thumbs down on this video, but I'm sorry. I'm not hating on PC gamers. It's just easier for me. And as you can see tonight, I've already had enough trouble with technology. To have a console that I know is just going to run my game is why I prefer console games. I mean, you have an Xbox. I don't know what that's going to compare to. What? Are you hanging on Xbox? Yeah, Miss, I have a gamer score higher than most of the friends I have. That doesn't mean that I can't be mad at it for not working right half the time. What's wrong with the Xbox? Well, for one, unless you're on your home Xbox, even though together we pay for Xbox Live, I can't play a game and have it connect to my gamer score. Stupid. We pay for my Xbox Live account. And it's a family on that yeah, console. We're a family, so we shouldn't have to pay for each person that wants to play the game. That's you don't on the home console if you go to another console. console. We own two Xboxes. If I spend whatever, $800 on consoles, I should be able to play on whichever one I want. You can. You can go play on that one and have me sign in. But I want to play as me. I want to play as you. You can play as you on that one. No, you, you've told me that I can't do that before. That you it, just can't download your cloud game because that's not Which is stupid. That's my point. <laughs> if I own two Xboxes, I should be able to play on each one. Dumb. It's just a way of getting more money from it, which I get. They're for profit, but like, when your, when your console costs eight hundred freaking dollars, <laughs> stupid. So Rob said, "Sick burn." Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Trucan eighty eight says, "I had a PS, so played a lot of Crash Bandicoot." Speaking of Crash Bandicoot, I have the uh, trilogy remastered, the remastered trilogy, that I would definitely want feedback on whether you'd want to see that or if it even qualifies. Do you think it qualifies? Uh, to be played on the Classics Lounge if it's a remaster? Let me know. Comment right now. Should that be played on a Classics Lounge if it's in the future? Um, my brother played so much SimCity. Yeah, SimCity, you know, for as nerdy or different game it is, the, the series did incredibly well. There are a lot of uh, closet architects out there that probably share the same opinion as me that they don't want to go through a lot of mathematics to become an architect or a city planner. Back on 360, I had a family account, and everyone in the family had Xbox Live regardless of the console they had. Yeah, back in the day. It doesn't look like that anymore. Yeah, but they got rid of the family account, though. But they want more of the money. They made changes to that, or how it works, depending on the home console and the other consoles. So, like, Travis can go back because the Xbox Live is under the Gravity Well account. Travis can go back there, play whatever game he wants, and it saves his game in the cloud. In the cloud. I, however, can only play on the home console and do that. So if I go back into the bedroom on the old Xbox one to play, it will not save any of my games or it won't update with the progress that I've made on a game if I put it in. So the only way that I can play is playing out here on this TV, which my husband doesn't love, but I can't go back there and play because none of my games will have saved. It's just dumb. That's why we need a portable hard drive, because you can just plug and play. That's why Xbox and Microsoft need to put <laughs> money brothers. Trocan says, sure. I'm assuming sure in regards to the Crash Bandicoot. So we got one thumbs up for that. I definitely want to do Crash Bandicoot. Uh, so you can all see my frustration as that game gets really difficult. Uh, so this is my favorite Sim game, or Sim Town and Sim Tower. Sim Tower was awesome. I played a lot of that on PC back in the day. Um, I did play games on PC. Uh, a lot of Command and Conquer. Uh, they killed that about a year and some change before the launch of the Xbox One, Rob says. So I remember they got rid of that. I just don't remember the time. It's just like when Halo got rid of split screen. Yeah, that's yeah, not good Halo. that. Rob says Sim Ant was probably my favorite Sim game until The Sims came out on PC. Sim Ant was fun. Honestly, when I played it when I was younger, I was confused all the hell about it. So I didn't get into it as much as I did the other Sim uh, Sim games. Even though the other simulation games are difficult too, but for some reason I just understood it. I put more time into it. Another game I really want to play, and I'm going to put this in the polls. I'm not going to tell you who it's up against, because obviously you already have your mind made up. But there's a game I want to play on stream. 
from the PS2 re-released in HD on the Xbox 360. So I've owned two copies of it that way. You actually bought the 360 one for me, Andrew. And then I re-bought it again on the PS4 to play it again. And that game is called Bully. It's PS2. It's two systems back. Oh, but isn't that also a, rem a remake? Bully? Well, that one counts, then. It's not a remake. You never played on the PS2? Well, it's the PS2 game. It's not remastered or remade. Oh. It's just made available on the PS4. I just used to spam the random cheat code until he gave me control of the spider, then I murdered all the ants. Wow, psycho. That's fun. As you were murdering them, did they say uncle? Is there ants? And if you say uncle, it's protecting. That's a bingo space, Rob. <laughs> Raven Nobody says Bully is one of my favorite games ever. Yes, Bully was amazing. Um, finding all those damn rubber bands. Do you remember the hunt for those? 100% um, Did you end up 100%ing it? I, so. I got close. I think there were a couple that I couldn't find. But yeah, that game is that game's amazing. Bully was super good. So, I mean, what are your thoughts? Like to see Bully on a classic slalom sometime? I love these things that they put up in such. They look like cupcakes. Yeah. Oh, God. Whoa, they're back. So how come oh. you can't hurt them by stomping on them? Oh, you have to do the slam. Yeah. Oh. oh! That was dumb. Yikes. Bert the Bashful's fool. So if you guys are new to watching the stream, we do reruns. Uh, we attempt to as much as we can do reruns while we're not live on Twitch. So if you're watching us on YouTube, hop over to Twitch, give us a follow. It's um, twitch.tv slash dose of nerd acumen. So definitely help us out there. If you're on Twitch right now, hop on over to YouTube, do a little search for a dose of nerd acumen. We have a goal at the bottom of the screen over there. I'm not on that cam, but we're at 74 of 100 right now. Why do we need 100? Great question. The reason we need 100 is because right now our URL is just a generic URL with a bunch of letters and numbers. That doesn't look good to us. And we want a custom one. For eligibility, we need at least 100 follow or subscriptions to our channel. What's great about YouTube? It's free to subscribe. All you gotta do is click the subscription button or subscribe to the channel. You can also click that little bell thingy for notifications. So you can always be notified anytime one of us go live. It's all fun and free. I should. I want to work for a vacuum company though if I'm a salesman. Our vacuums suck! So, if you're a social media person, you like looking at fancy pictures, we're on Instagram. Again, just for, search for Dose of Nerd Acumen. You can find oh. son of a. You can find all kinds of behind-the-scenes pictures and cool little toys that we have, because we're nerds. 
And that's what nerds do. They spend their money on stupid things. But it makes us happy. We could be out doing other things with our money. Things I will not say on stream. Because I don't want to pass judgment on others who divulge in that lifestyle. But I'm sure you can gather what I'm talking about. I also heard from a nice little birdie that we're on Twitter. You can tweet us at nerd underscore acumen. So check it out. See, there's that crying baby. Yikes. So if you like the Classics Lounge, this show is available every Wednesday if we go on time at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. We're going to be adjusting to a new stream schedule here in the next few weeks as weather gets warmer and the week ends really gets uh, busier for us anyways. The weekly dosage will be changing from Friday nights at 9 to Thursday nights at 8.30 starting after... Or 20. For real, though. That's the last Friday night stream, and we're ending it with a bang with the God of War release. The following week will be Thursday from there out, which means every Monday night you will find Lock Steady at 8.30. Every Tuesday night you'll find Air Fidel at 8.30. Every Wednesday you can come on in to the Classics Lounge here at 8.30. And then the weekly dosage, Thursdays at 8.30. What happens to Friday, you said? Another great question. You guys have a lot of them tonight. So Fridays, we're going to organize community events. That can be maybe we all have an open invite session for whoever can get in or rotate through people through party chat on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network or whenever they decide to launch the... Um, Nintendo Network thing, if that works out, or you don't have to use a mobile app to communicate. But we'll play games that way. Overwatch was a great example. We played with some people in the community. Maybe we'll play games like that. Maybe play some Borderlands. I've been asking, is that another Bingo Square? Yes, Rob. Another Bingo Square. We really need to make that happen. Um, but I've been talking to Rob about doing a Borderlands stream here with the community. I'm not sure how many people you can get with that. I think a few. But we want to want to play games with you guys. You guys watch us enough, but we want to play now. We want you to play. Is this boss fight? Yeah. Can you read it? So you're still on the baby side. That's what he sounds like. Yeah. Yoshi, baby. Then get a load of this. Have you ever completed this game? You have this on the uh, DS, right? I thought you no, had. You're right. yeah. you're right. It's the same game? I don't think it's the same game. I think it's different. I don't remember. But there's a Princess Peach game that's on the DS. We need to get you a DS. Why? You have one. You never play it? Save, yeah, it saves the cartridge. It doesn't save it with the DS, so that's good. You never asked to use it. Because you don't. It saves the cartridge. 
say you never have to use the, the ideas. Oh, come on, come on, go, 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 go. Oh, you're not gonna make it. Oh, you could have made it. Oh, no, I'm really not gonna make it. Got the bar, right? That's not how you get that one. Super Princess Peach on the DS was super good, Rob says. Yes, I used to play the crap out of that game a lot of times. You did. So we have an old picture of us probably in our first couple of years of dating, sitting on the couch. I got her her own DS after I had mine. Um, she had a blue one. Got her Nintendogs, because I had bought that and she was obsessed with it and wanted to play herself, so I bought her a DS. It's one of the first Christmas gifts I got you, I think. Yeah. Back when I was nice. I got our Nintendogs. We then got um, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. We yeah. sat on the couch that uh, summer and just played like, non-stop. Just battling and trading. That was a lot of fun. Well, so see what I'm saying here? I played a ton of games back in the day. What happened? <laughs> no, I know what happened. Both getting older and having a family and a job. It probably seems like we play a lot of games here on DNA, but the games we're playing is on here with you. So we're not playing um, as recreationally anymore as that we used to. At least I'm not. Drugs are being gaming. Hey, there are people that consider gaming a drug. Yeah, those people are stupid. Oh, yeah. Um, I did, however, put in some time over the weekend, and one of the reasons why I've enjoyed the Switch so much is I can just play handheld or I can play on the TV. But I put in a lot of hours on uh, Kirby. Had a lot of fun with that. Can't say it's a bad game because I couldn't put it down. But I know there's a lot of mixed opinion down it right now. Rob says kids. Kids will do it. That'll change your gaming. No, especially when you want to play Rocket League and they just want to play it. And shit too. <laughs> yeah, my son, who is uh, almost two and a half, um, loves Rocket League. And he loves uh, Rock Band. Those are the two games that he's played so far. I like actually played. You see that? See how vamp I am? You shot a straight line egg. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. See what I mean? Back in the day, you would have been like, oh, that's awesome. Now you're like, yeah, I need to get you. There you go, and I need it. <laughs> yep, when I was working at the Voldemort of retailers and being knowledgeable <laughs> as part of the job, it was one thing. To get the harder as things go on. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, it's it's tough finding time because like those nights where you could jeopardize your sleep are kind of long gone. Like I used to stay up till one, two in the morning and be like, I I gotta get up at five or six. I can do this. Now I'm like, if I don't go to bed now, I'm not gonna get ten hours. I'm struggling <laughs> right now. I'm still being up. <laughs> like. It's crazy how much sleep you need and how much caffeine you need to get through the day still. Like I found this, um, I, I stopped drinking soda. I got these Mio Energy things now, which probably aren't good for you either, but I, I stopped my soda intake. But I got the Mio drinks and I, I have been dabbling in the energy drinks again after I hadn't in probably a good seven, eight, nine years. But I found one that's like super low calorie and it isn't as horrible for you because it's part juice and it has um, a lot of vitamins in it. So I've been drinking that and it, it keeps me awake. Want to know the hilarious truth of it all though? Yes, Rob. Raven nobody says, do tell. Let's hear it. Spill it. Hilarious truth. It better be hilarious. Yeah, better make me laugh. Yeah, better make Andrew laugh. There's a lot of anticipation right now. Yeah, 
<laughs> the case says we'll sleep. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I'm happy that we, the, um, well, for one, the weekly dosage is on a Friday, which it'll be weird moving to Thursday again. So we started the show on Thursdays if you've been with us since the beginning. Um, but we moved it to Fridays for better scheduling to work with everybody's schedules. So it was always a celebration for the end of the week. But one of the reasons why I'm happy that the Classic Lounge is on Wednesday, it's that celebration we've made it through over half the week. We only have, possibly, if you're a Monday through Friday worker, only a couple days left. So it's kind of that. We made it over the hump. Uh, Rob says, as I got more financially stable, I was able to buy more games. That's when my playing started going downhill. Yeah, that's not fun for that Yeah. I definitely am able to buy more games, and especially the collector's edition things, once I got more financially stable, and I played less games. Whereas before, I was trading things in to get games I wanted. Like, I got rid of my Atari, I got rid of my Super Nintendo, my Sega Saturn, my N64, I got rid of all my like, retro systems at a time I was hard up for money. Why? Because I really, really wanted a 3DS XL at that time, and I had no money. I was on a movie set, I swear to you, everyone during breaks was sitting around laying on the ground drinking canned soda and just kicked back with a 3DS in their hand all playing Pokemon or other games and I'm like, I feel left out and I'm sitting here trying to play Plants vs. Zombies on my, my phone which had just come out at that time and I'm like, I'm not as cool, they all have Pokemon, I really want to be that cool. But I was working for free in the film industry and uh, didn't have another job. So I had to purge because we were hard up for money, all those systems. Uh, Raven says, I found that in life you either have time or money, never both. What is more valuable then? Time or money? Money? Because <laughs> usually the more money you make, the more time you have. He said you never have both, though. Huh? He said you never have both. That's not true. You make lots of money, you get lots of vacation time usually. The more money I've made in jobs, the less time I have off. You used to have to work like six or seven hours a week just to bring home $400. Now you work Monday through Friday, you get Saturdays and Sundays off every week, and you get sick and vacation time. Yeah, but I feel like I'm working more than I ever, ever have with less vacation. Yeah. When was the last time we went on vacation? Six that's years because, ago. That's because we can't afford it, not because we don't have time. What are you saying then? You either have time or money. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Try. Whoa, whoa. What was I saying? I was on some tangent. Uh, so the one thing I've noticed about this game too, the music isn't as iconic. Like I'm not saying it's bad, so don't don't get all. Look at all that. Scurvy. You know me and my emotionalness. You're incredibly emotional. Oh, yeah. You know I might cry because you said that. Mm. I seem to remember you pulling up Facebook ads and videos on purpose just to sit there and cry. It was, first of all, it's not on purpose. But second of all, if you don't cry over injured puppies, you're a terrible person. But you were seeking these things. Yeah. They just showed up. And then I watched them. Every day when you're trying to go to sleep? Yeah, because I followed that one group that saves puppies, and it had a happy ending, which is incredibly sad. I don't need your judgment. And to be fair, I was pregnant. Always an excuse. I'll stop it. Wow. I gotta go to bed soon. I bought, played, and beat Plants for Zombies on 360 Steam, iOS, and Android. Holy crap, Rob. Did you play uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2? And it seems like you had a good time there. 
Yeah, Plants vs. Zombies, uh, it was a lot of fun. I think you played it for a minute, too, honey. Oh, Plants vs. Zombies? Yeah. Not, not really much fun. Too hard for you? Huh? Too hard for you? I'm not really cold like anybody, so you know that. Yeah. And Kate says, I cried at everything when I was pregnant. Yeah, literally everything. <laughs> Rob says a little bit, but not a ton. See, I play for zombies too. I played Plants for Zombies too a lot. Uh, I stepped away when they didn't update because it changed like how you progress in the game. It was really weird. To it. Oh! Is that what it is? Yeah. Why is it getting all messed you can't up? Even touch it. How bad does it get? It just makes it go longer. Oh man! Like because eventually it goes back to normal. But it makes it hard. It's hard to control too. Rob says I also dumped a ridiculous amount of time into Final Fantasy Crystal Defenders. Play that one, I don't believe. Oh, you, you are so messed up. Do the controls get all weird too? Yeah, it's really hard to control. It was basically playing for zombie with Final Fantasy characters. The case says, oh my god, this level. Yeah, this level is super trippy. So if you collect everything in the game, do you just get bonus levels or? I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. The fuzzies took me forever to beat it. The thing I like about Mario games too is that they're they're not short by any means. No. They definitely want, and thank God for save states, right? But they're, they're ones that you knew you were getting your money's worth. Whereas there were other games, you know, back in this era where there were literally like four levels and you were done with games. Like, and they're the same price. Like, that's what's interesting to me, setting a standard as far as pricing on games. It's, it's a little more loose now with indie games and you know, other other ways to release content. You have your 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollar games, right? Um, but back in the day, like a cartridge, obviously wasn't cheap to make. You were upwards 50 to 80 dollars when it was the N64. That's how much a cartridge was. You had some games that were incredibly short, some games like Mario 64, for example, that, yeah, speedrunning was a, you know, not as big a thing, but it exists, right? You could beat a game in a short amount of time. But there were some games that were literally 20 minutes long, and you spent anywhere 40 to $80 on it. It's weird that there's not that, there was not that standard, or lack of a standard back then. You never knew what you were getting. Which is ultimately why I was so thankful growing up to literally have five minutes from my house via video time, which was before Blockbuster in our area and Ion Video or Family Video, depending on where you grew up. But for me, growing up, um, 
just south of Grand Rapids. That's that was the option we had. We had a video time. And they spelled time with a Y. So that was cool. I can't think of a cooler way to spell time. But that was just tradition. We'd go either get frozen pizza or a McDonald's or something and uh, pick up a game or two, I, I think. And uh, that would be my, my weekend, depending on the weather or if I had like soccer games, depending on the season, uh, Saturday morning. But um, games were much shorter back then too, obviously, as I mentioned. But thankfully, yeah, these rental places existed back then. Otherwise, I wouldn't have played as many... Uh, Games. Uh, Rob's has blessed you, Andrea. He, he has blessed you. So, but yeah, if it wasn't for rental, I wouldn't have played as many games. Um, same for now, though. There, there, there's a site online that obviously you can rent games from. Um, if it wasn't for for that, I probably wouldn't have played as many games even still to this day. Because there are games where I'm like, I really want to play that, but I'm not going to spend $60 on it. And then there were some that I said I wasn't going to spend $60, rented it, loved it, and then ended up buying it. So There's another reason, too, why I'm franchise loyal. Halo being a great example. Even if they have let me down in the past, I'm still a day one adopter in any one of those games. Mario, another one. Zelda, another one. So I'm loyal to the franchises that I like. Rob says, let me tell you about franchise loyalty. I know about your loyalty. You'll buy collector's editions of things and not play them. Because I believe you got the Bioshock Infinite one, didn't you? When you said you hadn't played that. That's loyalty. I'm actually super jealous. I think it was that one and another one you mentioned you had a collection's edition of. Um, but more so Bioshock Infinite. It's my easily favorite game of the 360 PS3 generation. Uh, you bought collector's editions of every single Assassin's Creed game and the collector's editions of all the guys too. Is it also true but unrelated? Now, I feel like you've had mixed opinions on Assassin's Creed. Didn't we have some of those conversations? Isn't it? No, Rob, Rob likes it. Rob likes Eric. it. Is it Eric? Okay. Eric doesn't like Assassin's Creed. Which I don't understand. I never really grasped that. Eric is clearly a masochist. Or a sadist? Which one's the one that likes to get hit? Masochist? I think it's masochist. Because he usually seems like we're born with us. Yeah. The first one is trash. Assassin's Creed, the first one? I liked it when it came out, but when they made better ones, sure, yeah. in retrospect, it's not as strong, but when it came out, it was really good, because we didn't have the other ones to compare it to. But if you didn't play that launch and then played number two or other ones first, sure, you're going to have that opinion. Alright, I think that's it for me. For you? Uh, two was great. Brotherhood is still my favorite one. Brotherhood's all right. I don't know what one my favorite one would be. I think two is my favorite. It's the me, Mario. That was the best when that happened. I was all alone in the house. You were working, so there was no one there to enjoy it with me. I was so sad. I kind of did the thing where you look around and realize you're alone. And you're like, wow. <laughs> okay. I'm the only one here. <laughs> So as always, we um, close with a random game. Not sure which one I should close with this week. Just pick one. Should be Kirby. <laughs> uh, Revelations was a dip in the series followed by a steep decline with three. Four Black Flag was phenomenal. For Assassin's Creed 1, the modern scene should have been just cut scenes. Yeah. So this is a game that I did play a lot of when I was young. To me, the graphics were amazing. 
However, they have not known each other too well. When they announced the SNES Classic was getting Star Fox 2, I was beyond excited for that. I couldn't believe, because it was in existence out there. People had, um, like, emulators of it, right? That you could play on. Uh, Rogue was a good side story. I legit just plain like it. Rogue on just got a remaster. Um, so that's available, I think, now or soon on the PS4 or Xbox One. Because uh, that was simultaneously released only on the 360 PS3, which I thought was weird. Unity was a hot mess. No two ways about it, for sure. This crazy drop shadow on that text pops a little too much, in my opinion. Good luck. Good luck. Haven't finished Syndicate or Star Origins yet, though. That's all right. I haven't started Origins yet either. You ready? You didn't like walking around faceless. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Do a barrel roll. Star Fox is a game I actually played every single level back. Barrel run roll? Not a barrel roll? I swear he said barrel roll. There are memes where it says barrel roll. I'm so confused here. I think I've only finished this game once. I've never been good at it. I played it a lot. But yeah, there are a lot of games I play a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm good at them. I'm not good at a lot of games. To be honest. I just enjoy getting up. And relaxing. Well, some games like Bloodborne are not relaxing. I get frustrated or stressed out by those type of games. Until I figure them out. And then I'm happy. Full shield. Oh, that was silly. Oh, yikes. It would help if I blew these up so you can hit me. Can't really miss that. He did say barrel roll, you're not mistaken. Sounds like bad sushi. The barrel roll is actually a different maneuver. I'm learning something today because I didn't know this. First boss. Thanks. 
got him. Starfire 64 multiplayer mode ate up so much of my teams. Um, yeah, multiplayer was fun in that. Uh, surprisingly, it had somewhat unique graphics. Um, I think I only played Star Fox Adventures once or so. Kind of fell out of the Star Fox franchise and never played the one that was released on the Wii U. Um, I think there was one on 3DS as well that I'd never played. And I don't know what it is that lost interest for me in the franchise. I just stopped playing them. Good luck. Good luck. So as you can see here now, we've switched to the cockpit mode. So you get a little taste of third and first person perspectives in this. So I mean, honestly, at the time, this is a solid shooter. I, I, I think it's still fun, you know, holds up, not visually, but as far as an entertainment experience, it still holds up now, but graphically, this, this game is even strong. Oh my goodness. my goodness. Again, I'm not practiced or rehearsed with uh, this game that's going on. I need shields. I love the bombs. I need shields. That's bad news. Ah, yikes. Never played Adventures. There was one on the 3DS I wanted to like that one because it was supposed to be modeled after the N64 one, but it was actually panned critically, so I skipped it. I think that's what I had done too. I skipped a lot of them. For me, I just can have so many games at one time that keep my attention. Some hold up more than others, and then just for some reason I never go backwards a lot of times. It's hard for me to get a, a game for a, a system, specifically the 360 PS3 era. It's hard for me to pick up games for those, that generation now. Because we've been spoiled visually. section. It's crazy. Yes. So down is up, by the way. I play inverted. It's because of games like this. A lot of people hate high inverted gamers, but it makes sense to me. Shields. Look at that. Bro, oh, help me. Thanks, Birdie C. Why is he flying directly in front of me? I don't want to shoot you. Oh, man. He's 
crazy. Why there's so many things floating out in space here? Oh, good lord. <laughs> oh my. Let's try this again and see if we can get it. Let's see if I can check it on this. so fast yeah he's not good he's not good at this game we got the boss here we just made it this far game over yeah yep that wasn't good so that was Star Fox as well as Yoshi's Island tonight on the Super Nintendo playing it tonight via the SNES classic um, if you don't have one of these yet, definitely find one. They're, they're worth the price tag. Had a lot of fun with this system so far. I love how small it is and how mobile it is. So that's really cool too. Not that the original Super Nintendo was all that bulky, but you get what I'm saying. I want to thank you all for waiting for me to go live tonight. Apologize about the technical issues and the delay. Um, ultimately kind of shortened the episode, but that's okay. I think we got enough content for you here. So, it's been another Classics Lounge on the DNA YouTube and Twitch channel here. Or if you're watching me on Facebook, definitely hop over and sub to either one of those or follow us there. Just want to remind you that tomorrow night, Eric the Dad will be live at about 8.30. I'm not sure what he's playing yet. I know he's been talking about wanting to speedrun a game, so we might have a uh, local speedrunner coming soon. Um, so... Come check out his stuff and cheer him on. See well, how well he does. He might be playing some more of what you saw last week with Mighty Number no. 9. Um, so definitely check that out. We're also getting together on Friday with a friend of ours, Caleb, who will be showing off Cuphead. So you're not going to want to miss that episode. We're also going to hang out super late and record one for next week because of um, plans that some of us have for the holiday weekend being that it is Easter, so we're going to be pre-recording um, for our episode next week, so stay tuned for what that will be, and then obviously we start all over again next Monday with Rob, Tuesday with the uh, Takes Two Baby, Wednesday with the Classics Lounge, back again Thursday with Eric the Dead, and then the taped episode. So Kate says goodnight y'all, thanks for watching Kate. If I hadn't let you know yet, make sure to follow us on Twitch, 
twitch.tv slash build some nerd acumen sub to us we have that sub goal right now at the bottom of the screen 74 we need only 26 more there are four of you watching right now if you haven't hit that subscription button yet please do it'll help us out so much we need that custom url check us out on twitter nerd uh, underscore acumen and instagram if you search for dose of nerd acumen and of course on facebook facebook.com forward slash dose of nerd acumen you get the theme here we're trying to make everything uniform so check us out, whatever way is your favorite, or all of the above. We really appreciate your support, and thank you again for checking out another Classics Lounge here with me. And until next time, keep gaming.